So after finishing off with the um, the fucking assassin Isaac Shelby, the piece of shit, let's just say he's no David Rice or John G. Fee or uh, uh, Cassius Marcellus Clay or Muhammad Ali or even a Willis Russell or a Patrick O. Flanahan, Patrick O'Sullivan. Whatever that white guy was that led the largest slave rebellion in Kentucky. So James Garrard. This is the second governor of Kentucky. He is an ugly, ugly man. He, he reminds me of uh, Steve Petrowski on East Bend and Down. Right? With the big old waddle, no fucking neck. Got just a fucking... He just looks like a bobblehead, no, a necklace fucking bobblehead. Just a dick. He's just a dick. <laughs> so, old dickhead here. He's actually one of my favorite uh, governors of Kentucky. He's the second governor. He's a farmer and a Baptist minister. He was at the first Constitution, tried to make slavery, abolish it. And then when they said no Baptist ministers could be, he, you know, was clearly against that, but he couldn't stop it. And he's the fucking governor, so clearly... They, even though they passed, um, Baptist ministers couldn't run in the General Assembly, he was able to become the head executive. So he was the top. He's the king. After serving in the Revolutionary War, he moves west to the part of Virginia that is now Bourbon County, Kentucky. He held several local political offices, represented the area in the Virginia House of Delegates. He was chosen as a delegate to five of the ten statehood conventions that secured Kentucky separation from Virginia and helped write the state's first constitution. So, you know, that's what happened. And then, uh, you know, you have this other thing. In a three-way race, Benjamin Logan received the plurality, but not a majority of the electoral votes because we had electoral college. The aristocrats wanted to fucking choose the people. They didn't want the people to have the fucking vote. Anti-revolutionaries. Although state constitution did not specify whether a plurality or majority was required, the electors held another vote between the top two candidates, Logan and James Garrard. On this vote, Garrard received a majority. Logan protested Garrard's election to state attorney John Berger. Blah, 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 blah. Wow, so actually James Gerard got in by the skin of his chinny chin chin. Why did, why did we have a re-election? What the fuck? They didn't say that it needed a plurality or majority. That was just a fucking clever ruse for the losing faction to say, no, do it again. No, 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 no. I know you got more votes than everybody else, but you needed to have way more votes than everyone, and you didn't get way more. Revote just with the top two. And then one of you all will be the majority. It's a good runoff election. I, I agree with the idea of the runoff election, but I don't agree that the Constitution dictated it. It was just some people who bitched very fucking effectively. <laughs> Wait, there are three people. That's why there wasn't a majority. It doesn't matter. We we let make up the rules. Don't Don't break the rules I just now made up, okay? So he didn't like the Alien and Sedition Acts. Love the Kentucky Resolutions. Good, good, good for him. But anyways, the big thing that I really liked about him, the thing that I marked on this Wikipedia page, James Garrard. There's a Garrard County. There's, um, you know, you have garages on top of, on not on top, on the side of houses. It's not really Garrard, Garrard Garage. And I had it marked, but evidently, I guess I, yeah, fucking highlighted something up there. Okay, so... It was about how he had fought the uh, the tyrants. He fought against the tyrants. There was a land reform. He had some sort of land reform because he had squatters who were sitting there, and so he's the second governor. So Isaac Shelby's governor for four years, and then uh, James Garrard is going to be in there for eight years. Every other governor is elected just on a one-term basis. After the 1799 Constitution, Garrard is no longer fucking king. Um, somebody else takes his fucking spot. But what I want to mention, and God, I wish I hadn't said anything about this. Maybe I could have done the introduction after the hook, right? Get you in with the hook, and then you listen to the rest. 
Is that better? What do you think? Um, I'm trying to make this going to be a 10 minute fucking thing. Oh boy. Okay, so. Here we go. He approved the enabling accident and created 26 counties. Left undone was extending the laws dealing with surveying and registering land claims. Thomas Lincoln, Daniel Boone, they get fucked over in Kentucky by land claims and they get the fuck out. Uh, Daniel Boone goes to Missouri to live and uh, Thomas Lincoln, or Lincoln, he goes to Indiana, then Illinois to uh, and, uh, uh, force Abraham to be a slave so he could pay off his debts. So you have legislators convened on November 28th and Garrard drawn on his experience as a surveyor addressed him regarding the urgency of adopting a new law for stalling more lawsuits related to the land claims, which are already numerous. Everybody has a land claim. No, this is my land. No, this is his. That was my land. This is his land. And uh, you, you need to give me my damn land, motherfucker. So a wealthy landowner himself, James Garrard, advocated and protected Kentucky's large debtor class from foreclosure on their lands. He was a people's man, a man of the people. Not for the debtees, the banks, the Henry Clays, but for the farmers, the salt of the earth, working class, the, the you know, fruit of the loom type people. Um, Garrard supported pro-squatting legislation. Yeah, you could squat if you ain't got some land. Find some land and build a house. Get a crop. You can do that. He, for, uh, he included measures, legislation that forbade the collection of taxes from squatters on profits they made from working the land they occupied. No taxes. Great fucking man. And required landowners to pay squatters for any improvements they made on their land. So I'm on your land and I went ahead and built this barn. You need to pay me for the time that I spent in the labor. Give me my fucking money. And then also, if you made money off the land, to not be taxed on any of that. No good. We want an agrarian society. We want independent uh, uh, farmers to be able to produce their stuff without fear that the government is just going to come in and take their surplus away from them. Don't take the surplus away from them. You got to have just unmitigated, unregulated, just business out the wazoo. No zoning, just an absolute free-for-all. Laissez-faire it up. Anarchy. We need not only libertarians, but we need fucking anarchists. And anarchy isn't chaos. Anarchy is very specific. We get to choose who we want to be hanging out with. Choose free associations. And, um, and just go from there. So, because of this land thing, he passed laws... That said, you can't have collections on any of the fucking tomatoes or corn that you produce. And then he says that if the um, squatters improve the land. So you can improve the land in many ways. You can fucking mow it, clean it up. You can put a brand new house on. You can put a new heater in. Put a new flooring in. You know, you can improve the fucking place. And so that's great. It's great to fucking rent out your fucking place so other people can improve the, your, your shit. But ultimately, um, you know, they should get some fucking credit for doing that shit. Maybe less rent, you know, fucking charge for the fucking improvements. Now nah, I went ahead and proved this, so there ain't no fucking way I'm gonna fucking pay you all that goddamn rent. Yeah, fucking landlords do that shit today. You pay them on time, every time, do what you're supposed to fucking do. They don't ever give you the deposit back. It's normal wear and tear. You want to say, hey, there's, there's this thing on the wall. Motherfucker, this is an old ass motherfucking trailer. There was fucking shit that was wrong with this way before I fucking came in. I made it fucking better. You can still rent it out. It looks clean. It looks good. There ain't not a goddamn thing you can fucking say that I done wrong. Give me my three hundred fucking dollars back. So James Garrard supported pro squatting legislation, including measures that forbade the collection of taxes from squatters on profits they made from working the land they occupied, and that required landowners to pay squatters for any improvements they made on their land. Despite opposition from some aristocratic legislators like John Breckenridge, most of the reforms advocated by James Garrard were approved in the session. So he got his shit fucking passed. He was for the debtors. He was for the fucking squatters. Pro squatting legislation. Fucking James Garrard is a bad ass. Also oversaw, uh, oversaw a new constitution. Nothing of what he wanted. But 
there was a new constitution that was lit right underneath his ass. Maybe in spite of him. So it could have been the fucking Confederate aristocracy saying, whoa, this James Garrard motherfucker is actually fighting for the fucking people. We need to stop this shit and get Christopher Green up in here. Something interesting I've seen several times. Kentucky had the Bank of the Commonwealth and Bank of Kentucky. So we had a centralized um, you know, Bank of the United States. There was a big ass Henry Clay was all about having a Bank of the United States. And then you have uh, Jackson, who is against it, and then you have the uh, Woodrow Wilson and the uh, Federal Reserve. That's our with the United States. So <clears throat> I see pros and cons for having a bank, right? Have a centralized bank that can sort of regulate the fucking flow of transactions. Um, every dollar is attached to a piece of gold, so therefore it's sound money, right? The banks aren't going to fucking issue notes that they don't fucking have, right? They couldn't do that shit. So they have um, the cash is backed by gold, and they would, um, you know, uh, all the money that would be printed would go through them, but that's only if they, you know, run out and need more in circulation. So in short of that, they're the ones that run the interest rates, run how pe where people hold their money and do all the fucking shit. So I don't know if you really need banks to fucking regulate shit. I was trying to fucking defend them a little bit. Sort of like you need courts so that way you can have a, a non-biased place to resolve your disputes. But that's the thing. It's got to be non-biased. And uh, anybody can fucking sue anybody for any goddamn motherfucking reason. And I've never once had fucking luck in a fucking courtroom. It's just like uh, someone accuses me, I'm fucking guilty. If I accuse someone else, they're fucking free. It just makes no fucking sense. So I, I just don't know the right people that can push the button and type in the people's names and get the fucking charges slapped right against them. No questions asked, right? So during Greenup's administration, the state chartered the Bank of Kentucky and the Ohio Canal Company. Greenup became a director, the former, in 1807. Despite his popularity, however, he was unable to pass much of his proposed agenda, which included provision of public education and reforms to the militia, courts, revenue system, and a penal system. I don't know what any of that's supposed to mean, but the Bank of Kentucky, he was a director of it, so great fucking governor, also in the banker class, so that's fucked up, um, I don't know about some of these other people afterwards, the, uh, they're definitely no David Rice, right, they're not the fucking apostle of Kentucky, like the Presbyterian Baptist minister, or Presbyterian Protestant minister, David Rice, who was staunchly against slavery because clearly God doesn't want his, his uh, men and women to be slaves to other men, only to himself. So the uh, David Rice, uh, John G. Fee, uh, Cassius Marcellus Clay, Muhammad Ali, Ashley Judd, George Clooney, and Hunter S. Thompson. A lot of liberal heroes uh, coming out of Kentucky. Abraham Lincoln. A lot of liberal heroes. So Joseph Desha, he's going to be another guy who's actually fighting for the debtor class. There's the debt tees, the bankers, the one who gives out the debt and therefore owns the debt. And then the debtor class who acquires the debt. I am in a debtor because I am in debt. And so he uh, ran, uh, this is right after the panic of 1819, so it's a fucking Great Depression. And so he was saying, I'm going to fucking help out the debtor class. And the debtor class is in, in fucking need, and I'm your fucking man. I'm the man of the fucking working class people. He gets elected, but they do so many fucking political shenanigans. You're only governor for four fucking years. And these goddamn partisans always want to fuck each other over right in the fucking get-go. So they can't do a goddamn thing. Tie them all up so they don't, they're ineffectively, you know, they're ineffective and they don't get shit done. So I fucking hate how they do that type of shit. You're only a governor for four years, and you need a fucking a figurehead. So if you don't have that person, you need a whole nother fucking process. You want to recall somebody in the middle of fucking four years? You could get the recall, you know, uh, fucking campaign going in about two years. It gets successful, and then have an election in three years. And you would have had an election in four fucking years anyways. So, you know, it, it made no sense. Uh, Kentucky had a high turnover rate, and that was a good thing. You got new blood and new ideas. A new king every four years. Now the kings can, um, you know, be in there for eight years, which I don't hate. I don't hate eight years. I do hate 36 years, you know, like the fucking senator. 1824, the Panic of 1819 ruined Kentucky's economy, and Deshaun made a second campaign for the governorship almost exclusively on the promises of relief, relief for the state's large debtor class. He was elected by a large majority, and debt relief partisans captured both houses of General Assembly. This is going to lead to the old court, new court controversy. So the Court of Appeals overturned debt relief laws favored by Desh and the majority of the legislature. So the legislature is sitting there passing 
A lot of loss for the fucking poor. So this is Desha. This would be the um, ninth governor of Kentucky. So the second governor and the ninth governor are helping the poor. In fact, I heard that it was um, a large uh, speculator fucking class. So maybe it was the poor. Maybe it was just a bunch of speculators who didn't want to lose their fucking ass on, you know, um, buying fucking uh, uh, sham fucking titles. It looked legit. What the fuck? It's got the seal of Kentucky. The seal of Kentucky don't mean shit. What the fuck? You're going to listen to the Supreme Court of Virginia? You're going to listen to the governor. The governor is the fucking king. The governor is the fucking president. I don't know if we have a strong governor system or not. And if we we should, by the fuck, I think we do. I think we do have a strong governor system. So, after the Kentucky Court of Appeals overturned debt relief laws favored by Desha and the majority of the, legislat the legislators abolished the court and created a replacement court to which Desha appointed several debt relief partisans, the existing court refused to acknowledge the legitimacy of the move. During a period known as the old court, new court controversy, two courts of last resort existed in the state. So this all had to do with the rich versus the poor. The aristocracy made their own fucking shit up, right? So they was fucking um, Desha and the legislature and what they wanted to fucking do. So they said, then fine, fuck y'all. We're just going to replace you. Um, uh, uh, FDR threatened to do something similar, but he threatened to stock the Supreme Court and appoint five more Supreme Court justices and stack the Supreme Court in his favor. Which some people said had some, you know, um, uh, constitutional fucking concerns, <laughs> right? Clearly, uh, writing on the Constitution is uh, that's the law of the land. That's some fucking, you know, it's supposed to be sacred. It's supposed to be, you know, um, uh, it's sacrilege or blasphemy to fucking alter those words. But that's what um, the legislators said. Fuck y'all. We're the ones that's in power. We kick your ass out. And so you had. The court that Desha had uh, appointed, and they fucking ruled on a lot of things and saying that his fucking law stood up because they were absolutely on some political bullshit. But eventually, the new court is going to fucking lose. The old fucking uh, curmudgeon aristocracy, the fucking plutocrat political politician, backstabbing lawyer. You can't be a judge in Kentucky unless you're a fucking lawyer. You know how, how much bullshit that actually is? So, that means uh, only judges are lawyers and politicians. They're lawyer politicians. And we all trust fucking lawyers and politicians. So, let's combine those two fucking occupations and make a super lawyer politician. And we'll name him circuit judge. Or district judge. Or judge of the court of appeals. Or the supreme court judge. And pay them a million fucking dollars. Give that lawyer politician a million dollars. He's a judge. How hard is it to sit there and say, guilty, 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 guilty. Well, you wouldn't be here if you weren't guilty of something. Ha, ha, ha. No, my cops ain't no fucking, I'm not a lazy pile of shit. They're good and honest. Never did a fucking thing wrong to anybody. I tell you what. I tell you what. Good old boys around here. We run the shit around here. At least, you know, when I'm governor, when I'm fucking judge exec. A lot of times that other motherfucker like be just exact and he gonna be off of motherfuckers. But you know what? It's all about the courthouse. Who's in the courthouse? Who controls that building? It's all about the courthouse. That's what it's all about. All of it. So, the uh, eventually 1829 case, the court nullified the decisions rendered by the new court in the 1935 case. So, the old court, I don't even know who the the old court, who the fuck, what court is actually ruling on this shit. It makes no damn sense whatsoever. ever. They abolished the new court, restored the old court. Who did? The court? Which court? The old court? Um, we went ahead and reviewed um, how you kicked us out, and we've decided that your court is invalid and unconstitutional, and our court is right, and always has been right. Oh, really? Is that what you think, huh? Old court, new court, controversy. John Adair also had some fucking shit going down with the fucking debtor class. And the, this is uh, the first uh, primarily composed of land speculators who had bought large land parcels on credit and unable to repay their debts due to the financial crisis was de dubbed the Relief Party or faction, in favor of more legislation, favorable to debtors. Opposed to them was the anti-relief party. So you tell me which side are you going to be on? The party that is saying, hey, we are merciful. We will give clemency. We will offer you relief. Or the other fucking one, fuck you. Fuck giving you mercy. 
Fuck your clemency and fuck giving you relief. You sat on my land, you made all them crops, you built all them houses, you did it all for me. Now get the fuck off my land. You get nothing. That's the fucking relief. Anti-relief party. That's almost like the freedom party and the anti-freedom party. The pro-life people and the anti-life people. The pro-choice and the anti-choice. You know what I mean? They, they did not define themselves as the anti-relief party. But fuck them because they're clearly goddamn class war mongering pieces of shit. <laughs> so fuck these class war motherfuckers, right? Always fucking the rich. Who are the rich? We don't even know the names. We just know the fucking general idea of the shit. But who the fuck are the rich? Who are these goddamn politicians kissing the rich's ass? And is a bank a good thing? Do we need a centralized bank? It seems like we need a people's bank. And we also need to fucking start voting for the positions. Lots of political positions. of Lots of positions for lots of people to get some power. And, um, and Kentuckians should know about that. Get you some, some power for yourself. Get into politics. Start to understand what's going on. Get people to vote for you. And, and then once you get power, you'll start to see how, you know, influence. It all makes sense. But, you know, that we do need major changes. We need a constitutional convention. Piss on this fucking constitution we got today. A million dollars for fucking lawyer politicians? Give me a fucking break. Fucking lawyer politicians. You know, Louisville spends 500 billion fucking dollars on lawyer politicians and then wonder why they're in debt. And then they fuck over the... the wait a second. You're homeless? Well, get up against the fucking wall. We're going to arrest you 50 times tonight. For what? Mm, did you panhandle? No, sir. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> no, sir. Right. It's fuck. It's, it's a Uncle Tom slave. Uh, no, motherfucker. I didn't. Okay. So just give me my motherfucking gun back and my badge. I'm a, I'm a fucking FBI agent playing undercover out in the fucking streets. And you come up with fucking with me like this shit. I don't like it. That would be a better way to fucking answer. <laughs> James Wilkinson. James Wilkinson was one of Burr's key partners. He's a he, he's a fucking Spanish spy. One of the great founders of Kentucky was a spy for Spain. And he was going to. We were all going to be speaking Spanish. Talk about the Mexicans pushing one for English, two for Spanish. You all, everybody in Kentucky would have been speaking Spanish or maybe French. Or some Yuchin, uh, Kentucky knees, or some bullshit. You had James Wilkinson own the land that Frankfurt was on. Um, uh, uh, Stephen Frank died in that fucking river, killed by Native Americans, Native Kentuckians, killed Stephen Frank on James Wilkinson's land, and it was right where they crossed, right where they forded across the river or the creek, and they called that place Frank's Ford. Where they crossed at that creek where Stephen Frank had died. Stephen Frank was a Jewish pioneer, got shot by Native Americans. Frankfurt is named today because of Stephen Frank who died on James Wilkinson land. And James Wilkinson is a fucking spy for the Spanish crown. James Wilkinson was declared governor by Thomas Jefferson of the entire Louisiana Purchase. James Wilkinson fought in the American Revolution. James Wilkinson was a very fucking slick spy. And even when Aaron Burr, after he killed Alexander Hamilton and pretty much ended his political career because Hamilton was like, you know, a forefather, an evil, shitty forefather, which deserved to get shot. Aaron Burr, you know, once you kill somebody in fucking power, they don't really take too kindly to it, right? They're kind of like, man, did they have to go down like that? Even Henry Clay had fucking duels and so did motherfucking Andrew Jackson. But Aaron Burr... He gets up with James Wilkinson and they try to fucking form their own sort of colony out west saying, fuck all you guys, I'm going to do my own thing. And uh, they was only going to do it with like 40,000 acres. So motherfucking Robert Stevens, who's got 100,000 acres, he could have just built Stevens fucking country. Instead of saying Breckenridge County or, you know, Eastern Kentucky, whatever you want to call this area, you could just call it the, the Richard Stevens fucking county. The Richard Stevens land, right? Stevens land. Stevens Port, there's a city named after him, but 100,000 acres, you that's enough um, acreage to, to start your own fucking empire. That's enough for, you know, um, 100,000 one-acre lots. So you can you can build a town for 100,000 people. So Aaron Burr is what that guy looks like there. We had the motherfucker James Wilkinson. 
James Wilkinson actually sends a letter to Washington claiming that Burr was being treasonous. Um, and yet it was actually fucking James Wilkinson who was the fucking spy. So very clever. The fucking, you know, it looks like it's written uh, in fucking code. Years postmark 13th May is received. I've obtained funds and actually commenced the Enterprise detachments from different points under different pretenses. Will rendezvous in the Ohio 1st November. It even says here, Wilkinson shall be second to Burr only. So it, he probably switched it. Burr was probably saying, Burr, you will be second to me. And so Wilkinson fucking turned on Burr. And I don't know why Burr wouldn't just be like, no, no, no. Because I guess they just wanted to wa wash their hands with it. Henry Clay defends Burr on this fucking, you know, ordeal. Um, when both of them was talking about it, you know, they both were fucking, and just talking about it, is that, I mean, a Burr conspiracy? There's like 10 conventions about what Kentucky was going to do with itself. The The Spanish uh, Empire says you had free access to the Ohio and Mississippi River. That's enticing. And then after that, because uh, Washington and Jefferson and probably Adams and shit thought they was going to lose Kentucky because they didn't uh, control the fucking waterways, eventually the national government controlled the waterways for them and even... War of 1812 and Mexican War was sort of to push, you know, push the uh, uh, the Native Americans back away from the uh, the land that Kentuckians had uh, seemingly, you know, captured for themselves. And so, was that under 10 minutes? <laughs> so, James Gerard, he was a badass, fucking had squatter's rights, and I like the squatter's rights. No fucking taxes on the shit that you, come, that you made. And um, the fucking landowners, the landlords should pay you for any improvements that you make to the fucking property. Of course they fucking should. I, I have no fucking motivation to do to improve your fucking property. Why would I improve your fucking property? I'll improve my property, not yours, cocksuckers. <laughs>